Welcome back. You are now watching the political segment of the weekend show. We'll be discussing the Water Resources Bill. The Water Resources Bill 2020 seeks to empower the federal government to control all sources of water in Nigeria. In implementing the principles under subsection 2 of this, the institutions established under this act shall promote integrated water resources management and coordinated management of land and water resources, surface water and groundwater resources, river basins and adjacent marine and coastal environment and upstream and downstream um, interest. In section 2, subsection 1 of the bill, it says all surface water and groundwater, wherever it occurs, is a resource common to all people. On today's program, we'll be discussing the controversies stemming from this proposed legislation. Joining us to discuss this, we have... Austin Okai, he's an activist and a political commentator. Welcome to the weekend show. Thank you for having me. We also have joining us virtually <coughs> Frank Fagalto, who is the special advisor to the Benue State Governor on project monitoring and implementation. He will be joining us um, in due course. Let's start with you, Austin, in mm -hmm. the studio. Why is there so much controversy regarding this water resources bill? Yeah, you know, is it's even against the foundation upon which this country is laid. That is the true federalism. We are having a government or the federal government that is seeking more power than necessary. And just as the government of Benue State and the Middle Belt and Southern Forum has said, including the Nobel, the respected Nobel laureate, Professor Ole Soinka, that this is ruga in these guys. And I agree with him strongly. Each state of the Federation has given a special attention to water, like Kogi State and Benu. We have a Minister of Water Resources and others. So when you are coming that the federal government to take a three kilometer land before the river, automatically you are talking of taking more land for the federal government which even contravened Land Use Act of 1978, which has not been amended and still effective in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Therefore, it is condemnable, unwelcoming, because by the time we allow this go through, entire local town will now belong to the federal government. And for you to operate, you must take license according to the, if you have taken time to see uh, Section 78, of that bill, where for you to to make use of that land or the water, you must be licensed. And even to drill a borehole, to sink a borehole in your own private apartment, you must be licensed. You must get a driller license from the federal government through the Ministry of Water Resources. You know, apart from extorting Nigerians or private individuals, which the federal government has failed to provide or to, to give the drinking a potable water, which is part of our own right of living. We are also talking of usurping more power to the federal government. Okay, I would like to bring in um, Frank Fagalto, an advisor to the Benue State Governor. Hello, Frank, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, while we wait for Frank, but like you rightly said, in Nigeria, we have the Land Use Act, and land belongs to, in Nigeria, belongs to the government. Mm -hmm. So why is it so different if the federal government says, you know, we need to pay more attention to waterways, and then um, it should belong to us the same way land already belongs to the government? The state government hold it in trustee for the people. You can't take, okay, are you taking the people of Ibaji in Kogi State, who lives by the river line, and they are majorly rice uh, farmers. That is what the they live. This is what they do. Or you go to Ida in Ega, where people are living by the river. They are indigenous of that place, ancestral home. Are you coming to tell them to take license before they live in their own ancestral home? Or are you telling me that a farmer, a rice farmer in Ibaji in Kogi State, to go to the federal government and get license because the location of this farming is within the river? Mm. Okay, I think Frank is on the line. Hello, Frank. Can you hear me? Yeah, good morning. Hello, Frank. I'll go straight to it. Um, it was reported in the Vanguard newspaper that the Benue State Governor, um, Governor Samuel Otom, has threatened to sue the federal government if they go on with the water resources um, bill. What's your take on um, this bill and how it affects the people of Benue State? Oh, thank you very much. 
you see, Nigeria is a geographical expression that is constantly in conspiracy. And uh, it, it is very, very clear. Just like my friend in the studio is saying, for goodness sake, we have the land use act that defines everything about the usage of land. It is vested in the hands of the governor of the state. Now, with this, with this very obnoxious bill called the Water Resources Bill, if we allow it to passage, it will be that Nigeria has so systematically and tactically turned into a unitary system of government. And that kills the very essence, spirit, and later of federalism for which we practice. So that is where the Benue State government is coming from. And the entirety of Benue State is in support of the position of the government because it is very clear. You cannot subject the water resources and the boundaries of this water stretching up to three kilometers as encapsulated in the bill in the hands of the federal government. It defeats the essence of why we are a federal system of government. And when that is done, it means that the entirety of the state in the middle belt stretching up to the state in the south, that is the south east, south south and south west, will be vested in the hands of the federal government because these states are literal. They are literal states. And if you check it, why it builds a huge conspiracy, a condemned conspiracy, is that the masterminds of this bill are not from states captured by the bill. Of all the states in the north, only Kedi is captured in the bill. And Taraba, which is more or less like a middle belt state. You know, so it, it is a huge conspiracy. It is condemnable right from the onset. It remains condemn, condemnable and it will die in natural death even before moving ends anywhere. Frank, but what you're, not, what you're not saying is the unspoken argument that this is done to support Ruga. So let's hear that conversation. The real argument behind this, which you're not saying, is the fact that um, certain states are threatened that this is another implementation of Ruga. Hello? Did you hear me? Yeah, hello, uh, uh, Andy. Hello? Yeah, so I said the unspoken um, argument or conversation which you haven't spoken about is that this is more in opposition of Ruga because the people believe that this is an alternative way of implementing Ruga. Is that true? Is that what is fueling this argument? Absolutely true. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go on. Yeah, very absolutely true. Yeah, because you see, right from right, right from the onset, when the uh, federal government—I don't know the insistence of the federal government on the issue of uh, of creating cattle routes, Uruga, all said and done. You know, it, it, it has been coming under a different guise and under a different name. Because of, for, for good, for, for for a very huge reason, why do we want to control? Why do the federal government want to control the natural resource of the state, like 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 the water, the, the waterways? Both surface are underground water and the banks. We know that, okay, water we are the natural resource of, a, of any given area, like maybe for instance, it's our natural resource. I know by the water we also, we have, we have moisture and then we have very posh vegetation. You know, by when you talk about one kilometer, three kilometer, three kilometers of any water we. And for goodness sake, okay, if, if such bill, an obnoxious bill, that's the, the right name, is allowed to pass. It means that the entirety of Makoji will belong to the federal government because it's talking about three kilometers. And you, as the uh, Makoji uh, man, and you know that uh, three kilometers of Makoji, three kilometers from Rwanda anyway, is like the entirety of Makoji from the South Bank. Three kilometers from the north is the entirety of Makoji, for goodness sake. So it means that what is the, what, what, what is the responsibility of the state government in a federalism again? So somebody will sit in Abuja and be controlling the resources of all these states. That is from the Bell down to, to, to the south, southern city. So there is the conspiracy. There is something there on the clandestine that is like pushing the promoters of this bill. We know the vegetation across the river, and we know that it is meant to be captured for a certain interest. So it is you guys, in this guy, and I support this 101% without being seen one. Mr. Frank, I want to, sorry, sorry to interject, I want to state categorically that these are your opinions and for us at The Weekend Show and um, our broadcast partners, African Independent Television, we cannot confirm or deny the allegations that you have made. However, I want to talk about the constant call. 
I want to uh, talk uh, about, uh, sorry, one second. I want to talk about the constant call for the diversica diversification of the Nigerian economy. Uh, some um, contributors have alleged that Nigerians or the Nigerian government is looking for a way to divest from our constant dependence on a monopolistic um, economy, which is oil. So they are looking to propose this water bill so they can divest our economy. Is this a frank and realistic measure of diversification? I want to hear your opinion on that. Okay, thank you very much. With, with, with all due, re due respect to the promoters of uh, of this, this particular narrative, I think it is all don't go. This is the federation for goodness sake. There must always be a synergy between the federal government and the state government. Okay, at what level has the federal government conversed with the state government in uh, trying to create this sort of synergy? to develop our economy that the state government rejects. For goodness sake, the state government all this while have been calling on the federal government to, to dredge her rivers, like Benin have been calling for the dredging of the river Benin all the while. Because it's a huge responsibility, they've been pleading with the federal government. So there are many areas by which the federal and state government have been creating synergy and been working hand in hand. You mustn't control the, you mustn't control the river to be able to do that. You can go in, 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 in concert with the state government and agree and, and execute it. Okay, there are many export processing zones established along the river bank. Yes, export processing zones are in the hands of the federal government, for goodness sake. You can go and get the land by the river bank from the Venice government. They will gladly give this, this, this land. You must take charge of the river. The state government have time with that number, like I said earlier, and calling on the federal government to dredge these rivers. When you dredge the river, it will create very huge economic activities. And so you diversify. We've been calling for the diversification of the economy right from the world go because we've over dependent on oil. So by, we, we know that river banks and river resources are huge resource for economic activity. So the federal government must not completely take over this. It's just to create a synergy with the state government, and every state government is willing. Thank you so much, Frank, for your contribution to the conversation. Let's reel the conversation home in Austin. So the same question I posed to Frank. Nigerians have been clamoring for the diversification of the Nigerian economy. Finally, some legislators are proposing this water resource bill. So why isn't this a feasible measure for us to diversify our economy? I don't see anything there because are we going to... You know, we, is, we have a lot of land if we are diversifying or diverting from oil to agriculture and each the government to the rural agricultural development can establish farms in once they come and take all of the whole the whole uh, the whole water bank you can't just come and take all the whole water bank belong look at the state mentioned apart from your state that he said all other states are within the swing nationality and these are the state that are perpetual misunderstanding with the cattle headers so if the federal government collect this thing now well, the next step is to hand it over with the so much power they invested in the hand of the federal government to hand it, hand it over to the, 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 the promoter of the cattle, uh, the, the Ruga, to take advantage of it. And automatically, a state like Benue State that has a state law already that regulates the operation of the cattle headers in the state, it will contradict each other. And therefore, we will, we will have a constitutional crisis. The idea of diverting the, the, the economy has nothing to do with water. We, there's no way we are packaging water to, 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 to import or to export outside the country from this, from, the, from this part of the world. It's not possible. And when you talk of land, there's a, always a home for synergy between the state government and the federal government in terms of the available land that they can use for farming. They are doing that in, in, uh, in Kirby State. Is there any, do they collect any land from the federal government, from the state government before they are producing Austin, it? I want a straight answer to this. This, uh, this bill has several provisions, and so Section 75 is the problematic one. Shouldn't they just modify that or erase that part and still let the bill pass? Or you want the whole bill if you to be... Check 107. He said that the federal government, even if the water at your own, in your own custody, the federal government can take possession and decide how to, to reallocate it. This is happening in a country where one percent, one out of ten Nigerians, can only boast of a state producing, like the federal producing or the government control of water. Especially even in Abuja here, it's only the, uh, the federal capital territory here. Yeah? I mean, the main town here yeah, that you can think of the water board, 
You go outside the skirts of uh, Abuja ma major town, you can't think of that. So the implication of this is even go beyond land. I don't know if you get it now. It has to do with your own right as a citizen. Yeah. For whoever wants to take advantage or want to use of the water must be licensed. Mm. And the government has the power to revoke that license. If you check 120 of that same act has been proposed in the National Assembly. So what it means is that I want to emphasize mm. on the local farmers who are taking advantage of this river bank, I mean the water bank. The disadvantage are so enormous that for a poor farmer in somewhere in Ibaji has to obtain a license from the federal government before he can go into farm, into rice farming. Most definitely. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but these are very salient points that you've raised, and I want to continue this conversation with you. So we would invite you to the program next week um, if you're available so we can, you know, um, dig deeper into this very important conversation. Thank you so much for your thank time, you. thank and you. thank you so much, Mr. Frank, as well, thank for you. calling in. Uh, that's all we have for you on today's program. Don't forget, the fourth edition of the Osasu Show Symposium is coming up on Wednesday next week. Um, the theme is Rethinking Africa. We have confirmed panelists like President Goodluck Jonathan, President Joyce Banda of Malawi, uh, the CEO of One Campaign, the president of Afrexin Bank, and a plethora of thought leaders across the continent. We'll be discussing ways to rethink our policies, our politics, and the way we do business across Africa, giving the new normal. So ensure you sign up on our website site www.tostvnetwork.com and watch all clips from the weekend show on weekendshowng.com that's all we have for you today you can follow us on social media at weekendshowng at osasu igmanadian and andy madaki on instagram facebook and twitter may god bless you and stay safe